Okay, I'm going to be talking about uh, noise and noise suppression. And uh, I, I'm going to be working with this image here. This this is a uh, this is actually a production still. Uh, you can see in my uh, I did a, a photo shoot with uh, in a studio. We shot some video and we shot some stills to kind of simulate a uh, kind of live performance idea uh, with uh, this musician here, Steve Baker, uh, quite a good songwriter and. Uh, you know, we shot video and stills here, and the idea was to try to simulate a live performance that we were uh, capturing. And I took a production still here to show uh, the rest of the studio. And as you can see, it's it's all seriously underlit. It's properly exposed pretty much for his face, but if I want to show the rest of the environment, I'm going to have to really open up the shadows. So I'll, you know, I'll open up the shadows here and maybe maybe even as you can see the histogram, everything's really slammed all the way over to the left. You know, maybe at that point, I, I think about, you know, using the, the black slider to try and open up. So now we can kind of see uh, the setup. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm doing this just to show, you know, the environment and some of the flags and all of, all of this stuff around him. So we can get a sense of how that was actually uh, uh, captured. But if we if we now zoom in here, let's uh, let me go back to a kind of a uh, let's go to one to one here. So this you can see the level of noise, and I can also see that you know I I didn't quite capture the focus. So not not only do I have a noise issue, but I really need to sharpen this up. So here here's my dilemma. If I if I go into uh, uh, if I go into sharpening. It's all in my detail panel here in Lightroom. If I if I sharpen this up, it's going to have a kind of a nasty effect on. See, I sharpen it. You really have to be kind of up here around 65% to get the sharpness at least you know serviceable uh, for the image. But that's also really impacting the uh, noise. Now, uh, whenever I'm I'm dealing with a noisy image. Really, the first thing I'm going to do is use the color slider, and because, well, a lot of the noise is sort of you can kind of see it as red, green, and blue speckles. In this case, there's a lot of blue noise, and I want to kind of uh, neutralize it as much as I can. So I'll use the the color slider, and that doesn't actually eliminate the speckles, but it does blend together. The, the noise component. And I, I think, you know, probably right around here, around 40% is, is good enough. Um, but here's, here's the, the real problem with uh, using the noise sliders. If I try to use the, noise, the luminous noise slider to really eliminate the noise, I'm, I'm also smoothing out and getting this kind of fake look where I, I'm trying to sharpen the image and, and and blur it essentially at the same time. And I get this kind of weird thing that starts to look a little bit like a watercolor painting. It's, it's helping the noise quite a bit, but it's also eliminating some sharpness and sense of detail, especially uh, in the low values here. Uh, it just looks all blurred over. So, um, and, and actually, if you look at the lit image does not exhibit that same level of noise. If I even take the noise all the way down, it looks sharper and there's a little bit of grain to be sure, but nothing like this level of noise. So really most of the noise is in the shadow and there's no special slider here to treat the shadows any differently than the rest of the image. So the luminance noise slider here is, is kind of it's a bit difficult to make it really work well in this particular image because really I just want to eliminate the noise in the shadows. So in this case, uh, I find that it's much better to leave the luminance noise alone. If I use any noise suppression at all, I'll just be in the color slider. And then we'll take this into Photoshop to do the final noise suppression. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up in Photoshop here. And I always, uh, almost always go photo edit in and then open as a smart object just in case I want to change my mind later about how I'm processing the raw file to get into Photoshop 
the smart object allows me some flexibility to do that. Among other things, it's a, it's a, it's a, it has a lot of advantages. So I'm opening this up here in Photoshop. And for this type of noise, I'm going to show you a technique now uh, to eliminate this really speckly look in the, in the deep shadows here. Because that's where it's really troublesome. It's, it's, you can see it in the darker areas here, but once there's any sense of light, you know, the kind of noise disappears, and it looks a little bit like grain. But back in here, in the really dark areas, it looks pretty nasty. Okay, so this is, uh, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to duplicate this, this uh, layer. This is a smart object, and uh, the smart object allows me to re-edit the raw file after I've got it in place in Photoshop here. But I'm going to just drag it onto the new layer icon and make a copy. Okay, now this copy, I'm going to run a filter on it to eliminate the noise. Um, so we're going to use the uh, surface blur. So we're going to go, go filter blur, surface blur. And uh, the surface blur is kind of a unique blur filter in that I'm going to zoom in here to one to one. So I'm at 100%. You can see down here in the lower left corner, it shows you the zoom level. I always want to be at 100% when I'm looking at the noise structure of the image. And uh, the surface blur allows me to blur things fairly uh, intensely without uh, blurring the lit areas too much across the edge transition. So you can see here, even though the skin is smoothed out, that edge transition there is still sharp. And that's a real advantage when we're trying to prevent the highlights from bleeding into the shadows. Um, so the trick is using finding a radius and a threshold that's going to work. If we start from zero, now we've got no blurring. Um, and a threshold of two uh, indicates that it, all it's going to take is a level of two difference for the blur to take effect. So uh, right now I'm, I'm looking for the least amount of blur to uh, eliminate uh, the noise. Now at a, a level of two threshold, um, it's not blurring much of anything. So we have to determine how much uh, we're sort of protecting anything that's less than a, you know, a level of two or anything that's right at the level of two, we can't blur it. So we have to find a, a, a threshold level that gives us some sense of blur. So now we're here at about 23 levels and we're starting to get uh, that blur level. Let's, let's, I'm, I'm really looking for a, a smooth tone in here. And otherwise, little highlights and things that aren't noise. See, I've got a little bit of speckles in here that are showing up. And my threshold here is also going to help me eliminate those. So I'll raise the threshold. Maybe I need to raise the radius a little bit. But really, this, this couldn't be more than 18 pixels. So that that little bit probably here, maybe even 10 pixels should be enough. But see, now I'm getting kind of modeled appearance there. So I'm going to raise the radius enough so that I get a sort of smooth tone in, in the shadows here. And it looks to be, you know, maybe around 15 pixels or so should be good here. But I need to raise the threshold enough to start eliminating all those little white specks. So I'm just raising a little bit of time and allowing the image to re-render. And there, now I've eliminated that. OK, so this level of blur is pretty much eliminating all of the speckly noise in the shadows. And I'm just going to cruise around the image, make sure. Uh, and see over here, it's doing that. But it doesn't blur these major highlights across into the shadows, which is good. OK, so I think I found my level here. Uh, now, now that I've done that, you can see that this is a smart object, so the, the filter actually appears underneath it. If ever I want to change this to modify how it's affecting the image, uh, I can double click on that surface blur again and get right back to where I left off 
in the Surface Blur dialog. So at any rate, we're, we're all good here. And now here's part of the trick, because I'm not going to use this to simply cover up the blur. Uh, I could use a couple of different methods. We could change this from normal to darken, for instance, and that would certainly fill in uh, the light speckles. But it, it this also has kind of an odd look. You can kind of see here it's there's a sort of simplification that occurs in the shadow when I use this. So instead of doing that, I'm actually going to change this apply mode here uh, from normal to difference. Now difference highlights the difference between this blurred layer and the sharp layer underneath it. And mostly the difference is in that speckly noise. So you can see anything that's noise is appearing as a kind of a light speckle. Okay. So we're going to use this to make a mask uh, that we will use to suppress the speckled noise. So let's go over to the channels panel here and you can, you can examine the, the channels individually just by clicking on the little thumbnail for that channel. There's the red channel, there's the green channel, and almost all images have most of the noise in the blue channel. So and this is no exception. Most of the speckles are occurring here in the blue channel. So we're going to duplicate this blue channel just so we have a copy of it in case we need to get back to it uh, after we've done uh, some manipulation in the image. Uh, it Okay, so we, we've got this copy here, and we're going to use this uh, as a starting place for our mask. So I'm going to go back to my RGB. I'm going to turn off this layer because I don't need it anymore now. I only needed it to get that mask for the noise. And we'll command or control click on that blue copy to load it as a selection. You can see the cursor changing to indicate that we're going to create a selection out of this. So I, I click on that and you may see a warning like this depending on how uh, noisy your image is. You may get this warning, no pixels more than 50% are selected. And so that just means we're not going to see marching ants in the image. That's okay. Uh, we're just trying to duplicate this blue channel into a layer mask. So we're going to say okay. And now, even though you can't see marching ants, we've loaded that selection. I'm going to go back to my layers here. And now I'm going to create a solid color adjustment layer. So my strategy here is I'm going to use a black solid color to fill in the, the lighter speckles here and suppress the noise in the image. So to do that, I'm going to get the solid color adjustment layer going to the, to, the, to the bottom here, the little circle with a black and white slash here. Click on that, and now I have my uh, pretty much the same adjustment layer types as I have in the, the adjustments panel up here, but I have the solid color, which is not available in the panel up here. So we're going to use the solid color, and I will select black here in the color picker. And now I have a solid color, and the mask here I'll option or alt click on this layer mask thumbnail I'll show you the mask is a duplicate of that be that blue channel so uh, going back you can kind of see we're already getting a slight level of noise suppression but what I need to do is brighten the little white speckles in the mask so I'm, I've got this layer mask highlighted and I'm actually going to run a, a curve directly on this layer mask. Okay, so I'll do a Command or Control L. Uh, well, actually, let's do curves. We'll do Command or Control M. I get the curves dialog. So what I'm looking here is I'm going to take the endpoint, the white endpoint, and co and contrast it up and brighten it up. And this is going to reveal more and more of the black layer, which will fill in. See right about here, it's starting to really fill in those those lighter speckles. So I'll find it something like this. You know, nice sometimes I have to, you know, a little less is 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 better because the more of this I cover up, the less detail I'm gonna have. 
uh, but I'm, I'm looking to kind of create an impact on the light speckles in the darkest area. So we got mostly dark speckles here, which don't have as much impact on the, the, the appearance of the noise. So maybe I'll back off just a little bit because the, the more I cover up with black, the less detail I'm going to see. And I want to make sure I have as much detail as possible. So I find a Usually I find that in the histogram, if you just place this endpoint right at the foot of the uh, the foothills of this histogram mountain right about here, you can kind of see you can use this little slider to do it too. Right about there ends up being the optimal place for this. And of course you can see it's it's really damaging the lit areas of the image because we still are, you know, we are covering up uh, parts of that. But you can see how much light speckles that's that's covering up. All right, so now I want to mask off this part. I'm just going to use a layer mask to do that. But I don't want to damage the speckle mask that I already have here. Now let's take a look at that. I'll option and alt click on it. So you can see that curve really brightened up uh, the speckles, which represent the noise in the image. I could go back to that. Uh, now I want to mask off this noise suppression where the figure is lit, where I don't want it uh, disrupting the image. So, uh, but I also don't want to damage this layer mask. So I'm going to make a, this, I'm going to create a group to hold this layer. So we go over to the layer options flyaway here, and we'll say new group from layers. So this creates a kind of an enclosing group, and we're going to call this uh, noise suppression. And now this this sort of black uh, solid color layer with the with the mask is inside the noise suppression group, and I can add an additional layer mask to that. So I'm going to go ahead and add a layer mask, and now. Um, what I'll do is we'll mask off the parts that I don't want to have the noise suppression on. So I just come in here and I'm just going to carefully mask off. I'm just using 100% here and painting with black into this white layer mask. Everywhere where I, I don't need uh, I don't need the noise suppression. So anything that's lit, anything that I want to see detail in, you know, like his hand, Right and the neck of the guitar, and you know all of the lit parts. Certainly, anything that's that's lit, I'm going to try and keep the the uh, noise suppression in the darkest parts in the shadows here. Um, so I'm just masking this off, and and you know we can get more detailed. I can make the brush smaller and just make sure I get into all these little highlight areas on. On the guitar, and uh, you know, maybe I want to reveal this light stand here. So I'm gonna first click, and then come down to where I want to draw a straight line, which is about to here. Hold down the shift key, and that will connect the dots, so I can get, uh, you know, maybe a, just a little sense of a highlight all, along that edge. There's a, you know, you're seeing actually. Kind of bright noise happening there, but it is giving me the sense that there's some detail. Um, you know, maybe also on this mic stand. I mean, we're getting into very, very noisy areas here. We'll uh, we'll bring up some of the uh, the blue jeans, some of the jacket. Now, when it gets down into the really noisy areas, maybe I'll I'll leave that suppression in there. Okay, anything that's a highlight, I know his shoes aren't that terribly noisy, so maybe we'll, you know, brush them in. Now here, here it's important to uh, look at the mask and make sure you don't have any holes in the mask where uh, you want to uh, reveal the, the lit part of the image. So I'm going to Option or I'll click on that layer mask and look at this, and I can kind of see there there are areas where there's holes. This is a really good way of checking, you know, to make sure that I'm like not having little holes in areas where 
I think uh, I don't want that noise, or I don't want to suppress the noise there because it's lit. So I'm going to kind of toggle back and forth and try and decide if I've got everything masked the way I want. And I'm going to come over here, maybe, you know, reveal uh, this is Bobby Lane there. She's shooting some video. Um, can tell that that curly hair maybe in this area I don't need you know it's texture on the ground it's not really noise but the uh, the noise effect the noise suppression effect is is affecting all these areas because it can't tell can't tell what's texture and what's noise so we can tell though so we will uh, we'll mask off anything that is something that should have some detail. You can see that these areas are so dark there really is very little here. Now we still have some areas that are sort of dark noise but let's let's toggle this on and off. And you can kind of see it's sort of taken back it's knocked back that screen of, of noise uh, quite a bit but there's still some areas left. I'm going to take some of this up there's still some areas left which have some dark noise, and we're, we are going to smooth that out in the next step. But I want to make sure all my lit areas are, are not masked off. So, okay. Now, in these really black areas, not over in here, you know, because we, we have eliminated a lot of, of the white speckles which are just appearing everywhere. But there's still some areas uh, that have kind of dark noise, and I would like to kind of really fill in some of that. Now, fortunately, I have that. A lot of that is happening in this um, in this blurred smart uh, object layer. So I'm going to bring that on top. And instead of difference, we'll put this in uh, darken mode. And you can see in darken mode, it's really filling in, you know, the shadows. But it's also, it's also kind of just diffusing everything. It's diffusing all the things that I just masked off. So, you know, I really only need to use it in the really deepest shadow areas. The rest of it, I can leave it alone you know it's it's not really affecting this area much at all okay so we'll make a layer mask this time instead of uh, making a white layer mask I'm going to hold down the option or alt key and when I click on the layer mask icon here I'll get a black layer mask so I've hidden that that uh, blurred layer completely now for this one um, I really start just working on the really the darkest areas and uh, can kind of maybe zoom out to, I usually go to about 50% here. And I'm using a much bigger brush because it's, it's a more of a blunt kind of tool here. Just in the biggest, darkest areas, I'm going to get that in there and just sort of feather it in into these areas up in here. The non-important areas, the areas that, are, that really don't have any detail, they're just deep, deep shadows. And I'll keep it out of the areas where, you know, I may want to have some sense of detail. You know, where those cables, see over here is just a deep shadow. I'll just make sure I cover that up. Same over here. It's just, it's just deep shadow. There's no detail in it. It's okay. And up in here, you know, when we get up in this area. And now... You know, in these transition areas, maybe I'll reduce the opacity. I'm at 30% now, and I'll just kind of sort of feather it in a little bit. Maybe we'll work this area a little bit here in a little more detail. So the, the idea is really not to, is just not to try and hammer the noise everywhere, uh, but only where 
it's really black and I, I just want to kind of create uh, a little bit smoother look. Now in this area you can kind of see uh, I have it in darken mode and even though I've I've painted this in it doesn't seem to be doing very much. Okay so the, it's quite possible that this blurred layer is not as black or dark as the dark noise that I'm trying to cover up. And I am in darkened mode. So uh, another strategy that I can use here once I've got some mask in place, and again if I solo the mask I can see where there might be holes. So I can fill it in. So this is a very detailed mask for this effect because I, I think the dark parts of that guitar I'd like to, to have those uh, instead of being speckled like this I'd like that to be nice and solid. Now I'm using this to darken the underlying image so if I make it a little bit darker it'll fill in all this noise so let's let's put a uh, let's put a curve and clip it to this layer so I take this little icon here and you can kind of see now it's offset and there's a little arrow pointing down to it. Uh, that means that this curve is going to affect this layer before it, and this layer is then applied in darken mode, right? Uh, so this curve is applied to that before it is applied to the rest of the image. So I'm going to use it to darken this layer and I'm looking at this to see how far down I need to go to fill that in to make it smooth. So I'm, I'm just you know, kind of darken it, darkening this down. Okay, done. Okay, I check the rest of the image, and you can see we've got some deep shadow areas here. Um, and I'm, you know, you can't eliminate all of the noise everywhere but we are eliminating quite a bit of it and now the, the, the noise only appears in areas that have some detail and uh, let me smooth some of this out here uh, and it looks like texture at a distance you know when we're, we're, we're printing this this noise even though it seems so severe when we zoom in, it's it's really going to read more like kind of texture and detail. Um, now, one final thing, and I and this may seem kind of counterintuitive now that I've I've tried to eliminate all this noise, I'm actually going to add some noise to the image just to kind of give it a, a sort of consistent surface, and that's also going to hide some of the little uh, sharpening artifacts that we can kind of see in the, in the, in the face and the hand here. Um, so I'm going to add a, uh, a gray layer and put some noise into that in, in overlay mode. So th here's the trick. So I hold down the Option or Alt key and create a new layer and I get the new layer options. This is going to be uh, it's going to be a noise layer. I'm going to add a little bit of fine noise. So I'm going to use the pre, and I'm, I'm just going to change the mode from normal to overlay. Here we go. And now I can see this little checkbox appears fill with overlay neutral color, 50% gray. So I check that. And I get a layer in overlay mode, but it's at 50% gray, it has no effect. Uh, it's going to only wear things deviate from 50% gray in this layer, will it have a corresponding effect? So the thing that I want to deviate is just going to be some fine noise. So I'm going to go up here, noise, add noise. And you can kind of see if I add this much noise, uh, it's quite, a, it's, it's quite uh, extensive. Uh, and I want to add a finer type of noise. So rather than Gaussian, I'm going to use uniform. And I'm going to reduce the amount. I'll, I'll get down in here. Now it looks like, see if I go 10%, it looks like we have just a little bit of texture and it's obscuring, it sort of obscures a little bit of that faceted look from the sharpening without it really looking too noisy. 
and it's giving a it's also extending a little bit of noise into the other areas of the image just a little bit to kind of smooth it out and this is pretty subtle but you can kind of see in the areas around around the lit lights it's just adding a little bit of uh, extra texture and uh, without it looking too noisy and certainly if you back up so if if this is probably the size of this image at print size uh, you're not even noticed that much that 10% noise is just basically invisible but it does give you a slight tooth to the image and uh, can make it actually appear a little sharper it also smooths out transitions these sort of halo glows around things helps to smooth that out okay so there you have it and uh, let's let's now take a look I'm going to zoom back in here uh, we'll go to 100% there's our final but let's take a look at what this looked like before so you can see all this really speckly light noise and yet not that much noise over the the figure when we add the noise reduction you know there's a little bit of highlights things here which I didn't uh, reduce enough I think in here so uh, we'll uh, we'll mask those off see there we are I can bring all that back it always helps to toggle these things and you see how nicely I've filled in the noise on on the guitar itself okay so uh, there's the full noise and now the noise suppression you can kind of see how it makes the shadows look darker and it just uh, it increases the sense of contrast and in that in that way it makes it seem like there's more detail than is really there so you hear all that the screen of noise sort of obscures everything and then we take it out it improves the contrast and the overall look so i hope that was helpful um, so please check out some more of my tutorials and uh, I will see you on the internet. <laughs>